Now, let's take a look at units of production. This is a little bit different. Now, what I want to do here is I want to take a look at how many units are being produced per year. Now, depreciation expense with the units of production is probably going to be different every year just based on the number of units that are, that are produced via the units of production. Now, it mentions here when a plant assets usage varies by year, units of production uh, method better matches revenues with expenses. Why? Because you're actually matching up how much was generated and how much was used up. So this is going to give you a better method, uh, better depreciation, a uh, better way to gauge the asset's value, and a better concept with the matching principle also. So let's take a look at this one with units of production. Smart Touch Learning expects to drive the truck 20,000 miles the first year, 30,000 the second, 25 the third, 15 the fourth, and 10 the fifth. And this is going to total 100,000 miles altogether. So what I want to take a look at is my depreciable cost per unit. So again, I've got my cost minus my residual value, and I'm going to divide it by the useful life in units. So I've got 41,000 minus 1,000 divided by 100,000 miles. And so I'm coming up with about 40 cents a mile. Now my units of production depreciation, this is for the first year. So I'm going to take my depreciation per unit of 40 cents and multiply that times the current, current year usage, which in this case is going to be 20,000 miles. So again, 40 cents times 20,000 miles, that comes out to about 8,000 a year. So that's, that's, that will be my depreciation using units of production. And again, for each year that's out there, again, my depreciation per unit is not going to change for each of the five years. My number of units that I've done during the year definitely changes. So that's going to have an impact on my depreciation expense. Depreciation expense is going to go up or down depending on the amount of units or miles that I've drove. Okay? Now, again, I've got my depreciation expense computed, and now I'm going to keep track via accumulated depreciation. And again, I can't, dep I can't, have, I can't depreciate any more of the asset's value once my accumulated depreciation hits the depreciable cost. And likewise, on the book value, once my book value equals the residual value, I can't do anything more to it. So again, um, the, same, the same rules apply for units of production as it does for straight line. Now let's take a look at this one. For on January 1st, 2018, Tyson Manufacturing purchases a machine for 41,100,000. Management expects to use the machine for 32,000 hours over the next six years. The estimated residual value at the machine at the sixth year is 47,000. The machine was used for 4,000 hours in 2018 and 6,000 hours in 2019. What is the depreciable exp or depreciation expense for 2018 if the corporation uses units of production method uh, of depreciation. Well, in this case here, I want to figure out my depreciable, co depreciable cost per unit. So my depreciation per unit is my cost minus my residual value. So it's going to be 41100000 minus $47,000. And I'm going to divide that by the useful life in units of 32,000 units or hours. So my depreciation per unit is going to be $1,282.91. Now, if the machine is used for 4,000 hours in 2018, I'll multiply 4,000 hours times $1,282.91. So I'm going to come up with depreciation expense on this one of $5,131,640. And that's answer A. And really, that's all there is to it when you're doing units of production. You've got to figure out a depreciable depreciation per unit and then multiplying that times the actual units that were uh, used up during the year, okay? And there's your depreciation expense. 